O sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. In the sight of the nations he has shown his deliverance. Alleluia. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water that he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation, and still the greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were, sent, you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we've received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Resucito, resucito, resucito. Is that fear no banished are my tears no death has passed away resucito resucito resucito
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken to him, and, now, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolidation, consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord.
fulfill my vows before those who fear the Lord. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live to the Lord. All the families of the nation shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. To him who alone shall bow down all who sleep in shall be in all who go down into the dust. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. And to him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. The coming generation be told of the Lord that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will praise you. A reading from the letter, from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. A number of the Sundays of the Easter season are, are themed with very powerful images. The second Sunday of Easter, we celebrated that of mercy, the divine mercy of Christ. Last Sunday was Good Shepherd Sunday, another very powerful Easter image of our Lord. And now there's this Sunday. What shall we call it? Well, let's see. The word fruit has popped up at least five or six times, beginning in the opening prayer. I suppose it could be Fruity Sunday. Well, maybe not. But certainly the vine and the branches that bear that fruit is a very powerful image. And so I'm going to preach a little bit on that. I was going to preach on fruit. It's going to give you all kinds of wonderful facts about the 131 different kinds of fruit that there are, but nah. And then I was going to preach on the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. And I says, well, that could be another time. Because I like this image of Jesus, who is the vine and the branches that we are grafted on there. We've all seen vines, a vine like a grapevine. We know that the vine is very important, has the leaves and the branches, and it also flowers or bears some type of fruit, depending upon the type of vine it is. And as I related to our first communion, children last night at our 4 o'clock Mass, and again today at the 1045 Mass. I had a nice prop that I was using as well. I kind of showed them that sometimes on a vine, the, the branch might get broken slightly. And then I asked them, what happens if, there's, if it gets kind of broken, but it's still hanging on there? And they says, well, it, it's not so good. It wilts. Or maybe it's more susceptible to disease or insects. It weakens itself because that branch needs to be firmly attached to that vine for it to flourish, to grow. Then I asked them, I says, well, what happens if the branch completely breaks off? What if it's severed and falls to the ground? What happens to that branch? And they says, oh, it dies. It withers up, and as our Lord says, it's thrown into the fire. It's, it's trash. It's no good anymore. Then I said, well, you know, that's exactly how we are. And that's why Jesus uses this image. He is the vine. And we are the branches. Now, we have been grafted onto that vine by baptism. 
It didn't start out that way. Through our baptism, we are adopted. We are grafted onto that vine. And so we are the branches. And then I asked the children last night, I says, well, what happens, what makes us weaker and what causes us maybe to be detached from Jesus, who is the true vine. And boy, they were a very smart group because right away they raised their hands and said, sin. And I says, oh, that is so right. I said, like venial sins, venial sins, the less serious sins would be like if the branch were cracked but still attached. It's weakened, more susceptible, not to disease but to temptation. It is weakened. It's not the way it should be. Then I says, even worse is if we commit a mortal sin, a very serious sin. That's when we are completely broken off, cut off. That's bad. But then I said, unlike a vine and branches, because when that happens, there's really not much hope. There's not really a whole lot of plant doctors out there that can really help. But I says, in our case, there is something that can help us, whether we are cracked or if we are completely broken off. And so I asked them what would help us with that. And they again were very bright and said, reconciliation, the sacrament of reconciliation. And I says, oh, that is so right. We know that sin alters our relationship with Jesus, with our God. It hurts us very much. And whether that be the venial sins, which is probably the majority of our sins, and hopefully not those mortal sins, but in either way, it it hurts our relationship, our attachment to Jesus. We need to be well-rooted in that vine. And that's why we need that sacrament of confession, because it restores us, again, fully to that, that baptismal standing that we had with our Lord as his adopted children. And then I asked the children, I says, what else is very important in keeping that branch growing well? What sacrament? I says, it's a special sacrament that maybe today would be a very important one for you. And they all raised their hand on that one, and they said, communion. And I said, so right. I says, the Eucharist who is Jesus, and I made sure they understood that it's more than just a symbol, that that bread and that wine really becomes the flesh and blood of our Savior, and that we are nourished on that Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's just like, I guess it's sort of like plant food, you know, but in a much greater way, in a much more holier way, in a very intimate way. Jesus feeds us with his very self so that we can flourish and grow on that vine. And that's why the Eucharist is so important to us. And that's why I encourage, you know, with them, with their families, because some of those families don't come to church every week, unfortunately, and I try to teach their parents as well, saying, and that's why we need to be here every week, because we need the Eucharist. Otherwise, we're starving our souls. We're weakening ourselves. And then we're more susceptible to that breakage or even severing ourselves off the vine. And so our children were well prepared last night. And again, they, I'm sure the ones at the 1045 Mass today, again, who receive our Lord in the Eucharist the first time, I'm sure that they are well prepared as well. I have great confidence and faith in their, their catechists, their teachers. So I ask you to pray for these young children, the ones who already received our Lord for the first time last night, and pray for those who, again, who will be receiving Jesus in the greatest privilege of all. And let us renew our faith in Jesus, in that sacrament of confession that he gives us to heal us, and then the Eucharist to feed us and nourish us and strengthen us. May God bless us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the Holy Catholic Church and all Christian churches, may we continue to spread Christ's teachings, trusting in his graces that breathe life into us and makes us a fruitful community of faith, united as one in Christ. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For spiritual guidance to perform our civic duties, that we may be mindful of our Catholic beliefs and dedicated to electing people who can lead us with honesty, integrity, and remain steadfast in keeping their promises. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For this faith community, may we be humble stewards of the gifts given to us by God. Be an example of mercy, generosity, and parish involvement, and extend warm friendship to new members and visitors. We pray. Lord, prayer. For Father Jim on this, his birthday weekend, may he be filled with grace and good health all the days of his life. And for the world's spiritually poor, who live without the presence of priests for the Eucharist and the comfort of reconciliation, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an increase of love and dependence on the Eucharist, in particular for our first communicants who have the privilege to partake in this sacrament this weekend, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer for our parishioners who have died, for Donna Eberhardy, who was buried for most blessed sacrament this week, and for Teresa Nitke, Judith Bauer, Harold Kane, Ruth Barbo, and all the people of most blessed sacrament community, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For a return to civility among all people, for kind words, thoughts, and actions, for our youth tormented by bullying or despair, for the intentions of our Holy Father, for those who have no one to pray for them, and all who have asked for our prayers. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. The oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have saved. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present you, your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. May you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a good week, everyone. Yeah.